in my dream, in my dream, I had a vision in my dream. Is that okay? I don't know. That's just what happened. I had a vision in my dream. <laughs> and I saw an attack of the enemy coming. And it was going to come against my husband, who I don't think really represented my husband. I believe it represented leaders. It represented believers who wanted to move forward with the things of God, really accomplishing things for God's kingdom. And when this, these enemies came in, they captured my husband. They put poison on his back, which is the back is a symbol of the strength of a man. It's the place that we carry our burden. Come on, if God has called you to something, there's a burden. I'm not talking about an ungodly kind of burden. Jesus said, my yoke is easy, my burden is light. But that's where we carry things. How many of you feel like God's called you to something? Come on, should hopefully every hand in this place. And so the enemy came and put poison on the place that we would carry the burden. And then the enemy took this rod in his hand and he began to beat my husband's back with this rod and beat the poison into him and beat him down and broke him. Now this was the vision that I had seen in my dream. And what was interesting is that I knew that the leader of this group that was coming to attack, I knew that his name was Rabshakeh. Write it down, R-A-B, Rab, S-H-A, K-E-H. -E when I woke up from my dream, I thought, Rab Sheka, what in the world is that? Is that like a reggae band? What is that? Okay, had no idea what it was. I looked it up and found it's in the Bible. How about that? I'm exposing the plans of the enemy right now. Everybody put your hands on your ears. Say, Lord, give me ears to hear. So let me tell you who Rabshakeh was. You can go and read it, 2 Kings 18 and 19. I'm just going to just tell you the story. But there was a righteous king in, in Judah whose name was Hezekiah. He was a reformer. He was really an example of an, an Old Testament apostle. He brought back temple worship. He was a good guy. He turned away from wickedness in the land. He had the people of God serving God. Revival was breaking out. It was an amazing time. But in the midst of this amazing time, the most vile, cruel king on the planet in that day, his name was Sennacherib, and he was the Assyrian king, and he came and he besieged Jerusalem. Do you understand what a besiegement is? A besiegement means that they cut off all the supply lines. It's hopeless. It's a very desperate situation, and this king surrounded Jerusalem. Now, this is a man, the king, that was, that was always devising new ways to torture the people that he captured. History records him as one of the most violent, cruel kings that ever walked the earth. And he's the king that the prophet Isaiah prophesied about to King Hezekiah and said, listen, the Lord says, no weapon formed against you will prosper. Say that with me. No weapon formed against me will prosper. That scripture also says, and no tongue that, and every tongue that rises up against you, you shall condemn. Why was that part added? Well, let me tell you who Rabshakeh was. Rabshakeh was the mouthpiece of this king. Rabshakeh was the mouthpiece of Satan. And he was sent to the walls of Jerusalem and he announced to all the soldiers and all the leaders of Jerusalem the plan of the king to utterly destroy them. See, the devil was prophesying to them. And Rabshakeh came and he said, don't think that your God will save you. Don't think that there's any way out of this. You might as well give up. You might as well quit. Don't think your leader's going to save you. Don't think you've got it in yourself to stand strong. 
See, he came in and he questioned God. He questioned the people and told them to, to put doubt in their hearts about their own strength. And he reminded them over and over about the impossibility of their situation. How many know this is what the devil does? And his voice was relentless, relentless, constantly bringing this doubt, constantly bringing this, this accusation in the spirit. And Hezekiah gave everybody instructions, don't answer him. So he went away, he came back the next day, constantly trying to beat people down. Remember the beating down, the poison. And I realized that this was an assignment. His name actually means chief prince. And I understood that this was some kind of a demonic assignment that the enemy wanted to bring against the people of God. And here's his assignment. He wants to get in our heads. He wants to come and find a way in that gets us questioning why. Why God? I don't understand God. Come on, Hezekiah was a righteous guy. Why God, why did this happen? I've been righteous, God, why did this happen? How many of you have a few situations in your life that you wonder why? <laughs> and what the enemy wants to do is he so wants to fill our head with the why that we begin to build altars made out of question marks that disconnect us from the heart of God. Altars of why that become an idol that stand between us and our relationship with God. God wants every one of those idols completely destroyed. God wants every one of those question marks turned into exclamation points. Come on. God wants to answer our why. God wants to fight for us. God wants to turn it around for us. And the enemy was relentless. I'll tell you something. About three weeks after I had that dream, it hit me. I, had a, I got a little sick. I ended up being home for a few days, recovering. And during that time, the bombardment of thoughts in my brain was unbelievable. You're not a leader. You're not a prophet. Who do you think you are? You pray for the sick, but you can't even pray for your own ear infection. Who gets ear infections? Two-year-olds get ear infections. What's the matter with you? I mean, it was just like this, like relentless, relentless. And I recognized it as the voice of the enemy, but it just seemed like there was nothing that would stop it. Has anybody else here ever been through a time like that? I went to my husband, I went to our elders, they prayed for me. And I tell you what, I am on a mission to break you free from the relentless voice of the enemy, the bombarding voice of the enemy that wants to disconnect you from the purpose of God. To come on, to put to death all those questions, all those voices, all those accusations that the enemy is trying to throw against the people of God. This is how they won. Hezekiah, the king, began to worship and praise the Lord. Come on, when we worship the Lord, this is how we fight our battles. Come on. He began to cry out. He began to pray. He began to intercede. Come on. There's, there's a linking together of worship. There's a linking together of intercession. Come on, in this house is going, the Lord just gave me a word for this house and said, you're going to be a power house. Come on, you're going to generate power in this house like a power generator. And it's going to be generated by worship, by prayer, and by prophecy. Worship, prayer, and prophecy. Because let me tell you, when Hezekiah prayed, let me tell you what happened. Isaiah prophesied. 
and Isaiah prophesied and the voice of the Lord went forth and he said Rabshakeh is going to leave he's going to turn back to his own country and he's going to be destroyed that's exactly what happened he said Sennacherib is going back to his country and he's going to be destroyed that's exactly what happened he said this city will not be destroyed not one arrow will come into this city come on he said I will fight for you the voice of the Lord went forth and it began to rip something open in the spirit. Can you see worship and intercession and the prophetic voice? Come on. God is doing that in this church. God is going to use you. God is going to use you to push back the voice of the enemy. God's going to use you to bring breakthrough for your city. Let me tell you what happened in this story. In this, in this story, right after Isaiah prophesied, within hours, God sent one angel. Everybody say one angel. One angel down and killed 185,000 Assyrians. One angel. God fought for his people. God fought for his people. Now in my dream, when the enemy came, because we had seen it coming, we were able to take that, we were alert the authorities, the authorities came in, they took Rabshakeh and his crowd captive, and we they took them out, and they took the, the rod that was in their hand they were going to use to beat us with, and they put it in our hand, and they had us beat the back of the enemy. Let me give you a scripture that was prophesied about Rabshakeh and about Sennacherib. It comes out of Isaiah chapter 30, and we're going to close here. Isaiah chapter 30, verse 31. And this is what it says. It says, the voice of the Lord will shatter the enemy. Come on. The voice of the Lord will shatter the enemy. Come on. When an enemy comes against you, you got to release. The voice of the Lord will shatter the enemy. With his scepter, he will strike them down. Every stroke the Lord lays on the back of the enemy with his punishing rod will be to the music of tambourines and harps as he fights them in battle with the blows of his arm.